Here's a guy who says that evolution is fake science. Now what's funny about the millions and billions of years thing is oftentimes they get real, they pin it down, right? Like they'll say like this mountain in Colorado, it's been here for 378 million years. You know what I mean? Our 1.652 billion years. It's like, how do they narrow it down so hard? Well, they use a few different methods. There are paleontological methods, geological methods, etc. If several clues all point to the same age, then that age is likely to be the age of the mountain. True science lines up perfectly with scripture. Yep. Now, false science does not. Yep. But when somebody out there wants to proclaim themselves to be wise, the, the best thing that they can do is just say millions and millions of years. Because they don't even know, need to know an exact number. I mean, if you had 10 guys and one said 1.6 billion, you know, 2.3 billion, nobody would, they would never argue the fact that they're off by billions of years from each other. Yes, they would. If, for example, people were trying to calculate the age of a mountain and a paleontologist looking at the fossils in it said it was 100 million years old, and a geologist said it showed a billion years worth of erosion, or vice versa, there will definitely be an argument between them. But as long as it's not, you know, 6,000 years, as long as it's not less than 10,000, you know, as long as it's at least millions and billions of years, why? Because their agenda is to, to, is to make the Bible a lie. That's false. If a scientist came along and said the universe is a trillion years old, they would be seen as being as much of a crackpot as a fundamentalist who claims it's only a few thousand years old. They just want to contradict what the Bible says. Now, people want to make the Bible logical and what they make it logical in the sight of men's and man's wisdom. You're always going to have find verses that contradict what the world says or what the world teaches. Now, the idea of millions and billions of years is a complete false doctrine. Right. It's a total atheistic doctrine. It is it's completely, not only the foreign to scripture, I mean, it's foreign to all logic. It's foreign to science. Science is when you take something and you can actually, like, test it. And you have variables. And you can test it multiple ways to see if the outcomes are going to be the same outcome. Or if it's just like you got one outcome over here and another outcome over there. Look, you're testing and comparing. Nobody can test and compare millions of years. It's, it's, just, it's a total fraud. It's a total lie. You can test it in just the way I described. You can compare results from multiple kinds of dating methods. If a paleontologist makes an estimate based on fossils, you can sometimes test that estimate by comparing it to the results of radiometric dating or known erosion rates, etc. If they all come up with the same result, then the odds of this being merely coincidental are pretty slim. That's how you test millions of years. It's just made up by, it's made up by the world. Now, as ridiculous as it is, the majority of the world believes in it. And often it's because they're taught in the public full system to just believe in millions of years. But you can look in the Bible and you can figure out the, how old the Bible is by, by, mainly by the genealogy. But look at Genesis 5 and verse number 3. And I'll just show you how, to, how you can look at the genealogies in Adam. Because people are like, oh, they're in the genealogies. But we as Christians should have an answer to every man that giveth us a reason of the hope. That, to, well, how is it in the genealogies? I even told him, I said, look, the Bible says that it's only 6,400 years. And he's like, it says that? I was like, well, it doesn't say 6,400 years. Cause obviously, it was written, it's penned down 2,000 years ago. I said, but the Bible, you can add up the, the time from Adam all the way into the flood. You can add from the flood all the way to so-and-so. And, -so, and it's, it's only 6,400 and some years old. You claim that there's no way to test millions of years as though you take testing seriously as a means of gaining knowledge. Apparently you don't think the claims of the Bible should be tested because we don't even need to look at geology or radiometric dating to test the Bible. Other historical documents and artifacts contradict it, as Aaron Ra once explained. By 2500 BCE, there were already libraries and schools teaching children how to read and write in Sumerian cuneiform. So if there really was a flood, as all these creationist organizations insist, then that story would have been written in cuneiform. And every subsequent society around the world would have their written languages rooted in that style. Yet, the Mayans were still using phonetic symbols and ideograms in their pre-Columbian codices, and neither the style nor the writing or the language shows any connection whatsoever to anything going on in the Middle East. The Chinese apparently devised their volume of symbolic characters sometime in the second millennium BCE, about the same time as the flood was happening, if not before. The Harappan civilization did the same, devising yet another completely original system of writing in a language and culture that knew nothing of Noah or his God, even immediately after that boat was supposed to have landed. 
when everyone should have spoken Sumerian and read cuneiform and worshipped Yahweh, but no. The rest of the world already had their own civilizations, languages, and even religions with entirely different pantheons preceding the flood and persevering right through it, completely oblivious to it. Are we to believe that after the flood, Noah's descendants went to China and the Americas and everywhere else, found the soggy artifacts of the cultures that were wiped out by the flood, abandoned their own culture completely, and decided to pick up where the previously existing cultures left off? What would have been the point of that? Now you say, what about all the trees? What about the layers? And what about the trees with all their rings? And, and what about, you know, these things that we, they can prove are, you know, are, are this very, very old? Well, this is how it happened. When God created the earth, and God created the stars and everything, he created them all already grown. So he created a tree that appeared like it had been there for hundreds of years. He created rocks that were layered. A lot of layers you see, I believe, happened from the flood. You know, he created Adam, who I believe was probably around 30 years old. So if you saw Adam, you wouldn't think that he didn't exist yesterday, but he did. And he's created to be fully grown and fully developed. Doesn't that seem like an awfully deceptive thing for a supposedly moral god to do? Why didn't he create fully developed things without showing signs of age that make it look like things happened that didn't really happen? For example, some Antarctic ice sheets show evidence of more than 6,400 winter and summer cycles. What's the point of that? It's not like it would have been impossible for an all-powerful god to create an ice sheet just as big without making it look like it had developed through cycles of summers and winters that never happened. A god that would leave counterfeit evidence of events which never occurred doesn't sound very moral to me you know the idea of like what happened you know what's what's came first the chicken or the egg the answer to that is a fully grown chicken multiple fully grown chickens actually eggs came first chickens are fairly recently evolved animals having been bred from wild fowl only a few thousand years ago but animals have been laying eggs for over 300 million years now science that cannot answer the chicken and the egg to them because you need the egg to have the chicken but if you have the egg without the chicken, the egg spoils. The egg goes away. You can't, and it can't give birth to itself. You have that big enigma if you don't know what the difference between that. You don't know the chicken or the egg. Speciation is not such a clear-cut process that all of a sudden the first chicken hatched from an egg laid and fertilized by a totally different species. Chickens and their eggs developed over several generations from distinct ancestor species. Well, creation answers that question. God created a bunch of fully grown chickens that ended up having eggs. Okay, so that's how it happened. That's the answer to the chicken and the egg. Now, they say, what about carbon dating? Well, this is how carbon dating works. So everything in the air has a certain percentage of carbon-14 in, car in, in the air. Everything that's, that's here has a certain percentage of carbon-14. That lie, that'll be cut in half every 5,700 years or so. So it'll be like a half-life. Whatever number it has will be cut in half after every 5,700 years. Now, technically, the farthest that somebody can ever, that some, they say that something cannot go back farther than like 40 or 50,000 years and have carbon-14. At that point, the levels of carbon-14 will be so small that it'll be undetectable by anybody's standards with any tools or equipment. If something is older than, than, than 50,000 years, they say you cannot have carbon-14 in it. It's impossible. Yet every fossilized bone, every fossilized everything that ends up being millions and billions of years old, guess what it has in it? It has carbon-14. I don't think this dude understands how fossilization works. During the process, bones are gradually replaced by minerals that take on the shape of those bones. Some fully fossilized bones don't even have any bone left in them, let alone carbon-14. Here's Potholer54 to explain further. This is a dinosaur bone, by the way. It's been replaced by minerals. Whoa, hold on before you get to the butt. Did I just hear you say it's been replaced by minerals? So in fact, there's no carbon in it. And this would seem to be rather a crucial requirement if you want to perform carbon dating. Minor point, apparently. They start with the assumption that dinosaurs lived 70 million years ago. If I took this to a laboratory and said, would you please date this, they would say, oh, well, we'd have to use something other than carbon dating because this is too old for carbon dating. No, Kent, they wouldn't. They'd say, Oi, Ivan, we can't carbon date this. There's no f***ing carbon in it. So this dude knows less about fossils than even Kent Hovind, apparently. So that proves two things. Number one is somehow the carbon-14 also miraculously stayed good for millions and billions of years. 
or whatever they're testing is not millions and billions of years old, and it's, and it's probably only hundreds or even thousands of years old. Now, I would like to take, I don't have the money, and if I did have the money, I still wouldn't do it. <laughs> but I, I'd like to take a fossil and have it tested at multiple places and just see independently what they come up with as far as their dating. Because my opinion is if they, they don't do that. That is, in fact, often exactly what they do. And how about doing some research into this question instead of merely speculating? You can call up a university and actually ask them how this process works. Of course he won't do that because he just thinks everyone he could talk to is a hellbound liar who pursued a career in geology or paleontology solely because they hate God and just want to sin. They probably take the first person, whatever they come up with, millions and millions, boom, that's it. Good, we're golden. And... But I bet you'd have all these, uh, I bet you'd have 10 different answers. No, the whole reason we consider radiometric dating to be reliable is because we can get very consistent results. But I will say this, the fact of the carbon, the carbon dating is actually what proves that millions and billions of, are, are impossible. They're impossible scientifically. If the fossil has carbon-14, it proves beyond a shadow of a doubt there is no way scientifically it can be millions and billions of years old. Yeah, that's true. If carbon-14 were found in a fossil, it wouldn't be millions of years old. That's why the fossils judged to be that old often have no carbon in them at all, let alone carbon-14. Look, I believe in dragons. I believe that's another word for what we would call a dinosaur. The word dinosaur means terrible lizard. It wasn't even invented until the 1800s. The Bible was penned down in the 1600s. The Bible was penned down in the 1600s? Is this dude one of those King James only guys who thinks the KJV is the only reliable version? Even more reliable than the Hebrew and Greek texts from which it was translated? Okay, when someone says, I believe in evolution and I'm also a Christian, they're trying to combine two different religions. See, so how do you know it's a religion? Because you can't prove these millions of years, you have to believe it by faith. I'd like to think that if this guy put just the most basic effort into looking up how geologists and paleontologists come to the conclusions they do, he'd see that they have nothing to do with faith. But that probably isn't the case. He's projecting his own irrationality onto scientists. He thinks they work backwards from their conclusions because that's exactly what he does. 